What's up guys? Welcome back to Deck Tech for Decks. I'm your host Caleb. If you guys want to support the channel, you can click on that whatnot link in the description down below. You'll get a free $15 whenever you sign up to spend on some magic cards and you'll be supporting the channel when you do it. Additionally, you can join me on Patreon. Not only will you get to vote weekly on a uh, Deck Tech, additionally, you will be supporting the channel when you do that. Special shout out to my high contributing patrons, Newsom. You rock. Now, let's get into today's deck tech with Tai Joaquin. And yes, this is my second deck tech of her. The first one was Storm, but she's such a cool build around, I wanted to build a token strategy around her as well. Now, this one's a little more different, and it's going to focus more on her first ability than her second ability, but the second ability can still kill the entire table in this deck. We're going to play a lot of cards that generate a lot of 1-1 creatures. Krinkos, we've got your Adelines, anything that makes a 1-1 creature, we're shoving it in this deck. And then we're going to play some cards like Pyrohemia to just draw our entire deck. And then once we do that, the ending of the game is going to happen with something like a Goblin Bombardment, a Perforos, God of the Forge, just anything that deals damage whenever a 1-1 creature attacks, whenever a 1-1 creature enters the battlefield, whenever a 1-1 creature dies, we're going to be dealing damage to our opponents, and then our commander is going to be triggering her second ability, killing them to death. Now, if that sounds like a deck tech you want to get into... Let's get into it. The first thing we want to do is generate a ton of tokens. We have Adeline Resplendent Cathar, and Pakal, and Krinko 10th Street Kingpin. All we have to do is attack with these guys, and they're just going to create a board state. Ancient Gold Dragon, this is one of those ones that can end the game out of nowhere. Depending on what we roll and what we have on the battlefield, our opponents could just be dead. Krinko Mob Boss, My Rail Shield of Argive, Horn of Gondor, Illustrious Wanderglyph, all of these are super useful to generate a massive board state state quickly. Increasing devotion, 5 mana for 5 creatures is not that bad, and then late game when we have an abundance of mana, we can just throw 10 creatures onto the battlefield, and then again, 10 is kinda at that number where if we have the right things on the battlefield, we are just going to kill our opponents. Elemental Mastery, suit this up to our biggest creature, tap it every turn, and we're just generating a free board state. Call the Copper Coats, now this card has won me games. Everybody loves playing creatures in Commander, and they love playing a lot of creatures, so this can generate you a massive board state very quickly. Canoptic Scarab Swarm, this is going to hate out those graveyard strategies while giving us a free board state. Song of Totentans and 4th Erlingas, now these are very useful cards, especially 4th because because we can go ahead and take the Monarch with that. We do have a lot of ways to generate a ton of mana in this deck, so X can be pretty massive at times. Zerzoth is really good here. Those Devil Tokens are exactly what our Commander wants. All we have to do is generate a couple of those. They can ping each other down, and we're going to draw a card for each Devil Token we kill with another Devil. Let's double up on all of those Creature Tokens with Mondrak, and hey, let's triple up on them while we're at it with Ohir. The next thing we want to do is deal damage with those tokens whenever they literally do anything, and I mean anything. We have Witty Roastmaster, Impact Trimmers, Perforos God of the Forge, and War Leader's Call. Now whenever a token enters the battlefield, someone's taking damage. Raid Bombardment and Hell Rider, whenever our creature tokens attack, our opponents are going to be taking damage then. Spiteful Prankster, Hissing and Guarnar, Goblin Bombardment, whenever our creatures die or we sacrifice them, our opponents are again taking more damage. Pyrohemia can kind of get us there in a situation, but honestly, this is in the deck mostly just for the card advantage. If we're generating a whole board of 1-1s one and then we just pay 1 mana into Pyrohemia, we're going to draw cards equal to the amount of 1-1s one we kill with it. That's going to be kind of insane. Goblin Sharpshooter kind of works similarly, right? We can deal 1 damage to a 1-1, one, one, untap it, 1 damage to a 1-1, one, one, untap it, and we're going to be drawing a card whenever we do that. Blazing Volley, Tectonic Hazard, In the Festivities, Electro Trickery, these are all amazing cards and kind of pseudo board wipes that are one-sided in this deck. All we have to do is pump a lot of mana into our commander, fire it off, fire these off, and then boom, we're dealing a lot of damage to all of our opponent's creatures, killing their entire boards. Moving on to the core of the deck, we have Illusionist Bracers and Battle Mage Bracers. These are going to trigger whenever we tap our commander, doubling up on the activated ability. Jessica's Will, 
mana geyser, Neheb, all of these can generate a ton of mana and we can either shove that mana into our commander to deal a ton of damage or we can shove this mana into those X spells to generate an instant board state. Battle him kind of does the same thing. We already need a board state, but in a scenario where we have a giant board state, goblin bombardment on the battlefield, we can cast battle him, shove all of that mana into our commander and then proceed to win the game. Wand of the World Soul, giving our things Convoke is extremely good, especially when we're going to have a massive board state. Ashnod's Altar and Phyrexian Altar, another way to sacrifice our tokens for value. City on Fire. Now, notably, I would probably only play this card when we're about to win the game, but in a scenario where you're casting this for free, you're probably basically there. Clever Concealment, solid board protection. Sabira, I really like this as a card advantage piece. A lot of our creatures, most of our creatures, are 1 1s. So so now we'll just draw cards equal to however many 1-1s deal combat damage. That's an incredibly useful ability in Boros. Skull Clamp, definitely one of the best cards in the deck. We have Neali Sun's Vanguard, super solid card advantage, and double strike on tokens can be lethal. Rumor Gatherer is amazing for the scry ability, and we will get one card a turn. Mentor of the Meek, go ahead, shove a lot of mana into him, draw a lot of cards. Professional Facebreaker, now the treasures in our deck are very flexible. And additionally, it's just going to be solid ramp early game. Will of Misfortune for the very good card advantage. Lightning Greaves for protecting our commander. Earthquake is also pretty flexible in this deck. Not only is it a very powerful board wipe, but additionally, if we have a lot of 1-1s on the battlefield, we can just fire off Earthquake and then boom, draw a ton of cards. Smothering Tithe is in the deck as well. We want to generate a ton of mana. That way we can activate our commander's ability. We can get those X spells off. Having Smothering Tithe is just going to be very good for this deck. Boro Signet, Is It Signet, Talisman and Conviction, Wayfarer's Bobble, Soul Ring, just your very standard ramp cards. From there, we do have to eat our vegetables and put some removal in this deck. Generous Gift, Swords to Plowshare, all very efficient interaction. Disenchant to get rid of those enchantments. Then we have Austere Command. Now, we do already have a lot of one-sided board wipes in this deck, but Austere Command is mostly here to deal with the enchantment or artifact strategies. Again, if you guys haven't seen the Storm build of this deck, go check that out. I will link it in this video, in the description, and probably on screen right now. This commander is just so unique and the ability is awesome. I couldn't decide if I wanted to take the token route or the storm route, so I decided why not both, am I right? Additionally, maybe you want to make sort of a hybrid. You can go watch both videos, maybe grab some ideas from one, grab some ideas from this one, merge them together. I'm really excited to see what you guys can do with this commander. I do have a C list already built, so if you guys want to see the competitive version, leave a comment down below and maybe I'll post that one as well. Still in testing since it is an early commander, but uh, the goal is basically generate infinite mana and then from there one burn spell just kills the entire table. Not super interesting, but it is CEDH, so that's kind of what you're going to get. And if we're not going infinite and killing the entire table, we are just hating out the entire board. Cannons aren't resolving, nothing's resolving, right? We can go ahead and wipe the board very consistently with this girl in the command zone. With that being said, I would like to thank the patrons, Newsome, Excessum, Chicken Salad, Creator, you guys are amazing. Really keep the channel going, I appreciate you guys a lot. Lastly, I hope this helped you in your deck building endeavors, and I will see you in the next next one.